Welcome back to the lab. Friday night. Tomorrow, NZ Superlap Series Round 1 at Pukekohe Motorsport Park. We have got the car on the trailer. Car drove on the trailer, obviously. It, I think it's probably pretty good. It's not 100%. I'll fully confess or admit or forewarn or whatever. I'll tell you that right now. The car has not had a tune after it's been dropped from 11 to 1 compression down to 10 to 1 compression. There will be some things that are not quite right. It should be, in theory, on the safe side. It should need more ignition timing than what it's got. And we should be alright. I have run the car a couple of times and the lambda readings that we got all seemed pretty good. I'm not that much of a tuner, but that's, they seemed in the ballpark, right? So. The PDM's not in the car, unfortunately. I did say that we needed to run the car and we needed to test and see that everything was working how I anticipated it to run. There were a couple of things. There was the, um, the intercooler coolant pump actually drew more current than, according to the PDM, than what I had tested here, despite having the battery charger on the battery to bring the voltage up to 14 point whatever it is four volts or something the battery charger runs at and testing the amperage of the pump at that point in time it still managed to then it was maybe five amps or something it still managed to draw more than eight amps when it was out on the circuit doing stuff and things out there fluid dynamics and things come into play temperatures and pressures and who knows what else so that needed two pins rather than one pin no big deal give it 16 amps capability instead of eight that's fine whatever the engine coolant pump was the same deal that tested at six or seven amps here at home um, on the racetrack apparently once everything's up to temperature and up to pressure it was drawing more like 11 12 13 amps so that was no good so that needed to go on to the it's quite technical isn't it higher powered output a 25 amp pin instead of an 8 amp so I did that and then things went a bit sideways because um, I was trying to run it through pulse width modulation and it didn't like that and it's to do probably more than anything to do with the setup in the march more than the actual product but then the product should have been able to do that so long story short PDM's on the bench on, on the shelf there where is it? There, I think just above some, it's over there. Uh, and the relays and fuses are back in the car, just until we get to the bottom of all that and get that sussed out. It's, Pukeko is not a track that you want the engine turning off halfway round turn one at 180k an hour. Bad things will happen. So I just, I've done the best that I can do to make it <laughs> reliable. <laughs> it used to be, it seems to be, Jeez, we've blown an alternator and oh, it goes on and on. But never mind. So, I think that side of it is okay. Um, I changed some suspension components a little while ago. I changed the lower pins to 4140 instead of whatever they were. I can't, uh, some of them, a couple of them were mild steel actually, but they are three quarter inch pins. So, yeah, they should have been fine. Mild steel will bend quite a long way before it lets go. Um, but they weren't bent or anything. I was just worried about them, so I changed them. That's done. I corrected some rear suspension geometry to change it under, like, my wrist is the back of the car. Under squat, it was going toe in, so both rear tyres would toe in under squat to make the car more stable under acceleration. Only problem is you go to a track like Pukekohe, and you're hitting big bumps on one side and not the other, and then you get a toe change on one side not the other and the car gets bump steer and wobbles all over the racetrack and it and it lead foot too actually um so i've corrected that I've dialed it out completely so there's nothing now zero and yeah that made a big difference the car was actually really planted at pukegoe compared to the previous time that i'd run there it's heaps nicer to drive so previously we ran 105 pukegoe with the We'll call it the long back straight, but technically it's it's shorter, right? Because it doesn't have the kink in it. Uh, we ran a 105. The super lap track record there is with the kink in the back straight, which is about an eight second penalty or whatever. I don't know. Someone will tell me it's di different, but that's what 
a renowned racer has said that if, if you run the car around there without the kink and then with the kink, it's about eight seconds difference. So um, eight seconds plus 105 is a 113. So we're quite a wee way away from a 106. However, we had the truck gearbox in there when we did the 105. We've now got a sequential gearbox and we had 400 kilowatts and now we've got five, maybe. We'll see how much we, one day we'll figure out how much we lost when I decompressed it. Um, so can we make up that much difference in time? It is a horsepower track. You do spend a lot of time on the throttle, but I'm not that brave. So maybe not. Will, will we? As long as we get within nipping at their ankles, that'll be fun enough, you know, for a shopping trolley to be on the heels of something that was a race car when it left the factory and then had extensive amount of work done on it to do that sort of time. Um, that's about it. Everything's ready to go. I'll chuck it all in the ute in the morning and um, we'll head up there and I'll try and remember to put the Go <laughs> GoPro on. And... Um, We'll just see how it goes. That's it's, as long as I can do a debrief afterwards with not a massive disaster included in the debrief. Objective achieved. Super lap season is only four rounds. It's very very short. However, it's spread out over six months, which is an epic pain in the ass trying to keep a car race ready for six months. But it's what we've got. So. I'm not doing one of the rounds, I'm only doing three. It is a drop around season. So every round counts. If I go out and I do a bad have a bad weekend or whatever, that's seriously detrimental to the season as such. I'm not expecting a win. There's a couple of cars that have entered that probably should knock us out of contention pretty significantly. But we'll see what goes on, you know, cars break. Look at my car, my car breaks. Just random things, sitting in the staging, ready to go at whatever it was, GTR Festival or something. Everything's perfect and the alternator just goes, I'm out, and it stops working. And that can happen to anyone at any point in time. So she's a bit of a game on, three rounds, really, to make it all happen. All right, let's put some seriously boring footage from the testing on the Saturday, that's when the car had the map sensor play up when it was on the trailer and I got it sorted and then we went out and we actually had some power supply gremlins going on. So just took it quietly and just drove around the track and that was that. Take it home, have a look at the logs and sort it out. Right, thanks for watching. I will update you on um, this. this thing here that I'm sitting on. That's had some stuff and things done, so we'll update you on that soon. Right, cheers, bye.
if you've stuck around this long, I just want to clarify a couple of things. Um, the drive-by-wire system on the car requires apparently more than 8 amps. I didn't anticipate that. Uh, I couldn't find any literature that would suggest it would need more than that. In fact, a couple of people argued that no, there must be something wrong. It should never need as much as that. Uh, I when I ran the car in that test, what happens is on the here we go. Now we're getting tech on the ADIOs. If you try and run more than eight amps on them, they'll actually go into PWM output, the pulse width modulation output, instead of just cutting off. They try to control the output from that pin before they eventually give up and say, no, it's too much to turn off. So what was happening with the drive-by-wire system, it needs vehicle voltage, so 14 point, they call it 12 volts, it never is. It's 14.4 volts or whatever the battery is being charged at. It needs that to run properly. And the PDM, because I was effectively overloading that pin, was giving it about four or five volts. So you'll see quite often, I've gone up through the gears, First and second, oh sorry, second and third's okay. Fourth, usually all right. For some reason, by the time I got to fifth, it threw a spaz about that and didn't like it because it didn't get enough power into the drive-by-wire system and it pulled the throttle back. So at that point in time, I wasn't logging actual pedal position. I was only logging throttle position. So it wasn't that easy to catch up on that until we saw the actual voltages. Later on, I put the drive-by-wire system onto it two pins to give it 16 amps capability, that problem went away. So that was not a product fault, that was a setup fault, which is the whole point. That was the very first time the car had been driven, what you just saw, uh, the very first time it had been used with that setup. So uh, it's no surprise we found some things that, went, well I found some things that went right and fixed them. Uh, old mate in the I don't know what it was, some sort of Trans Am or something. I probably shouldn't call him a dickhead, but I did. Um, he got sent home. It's a play day. It's uh, pass on the straights under power. Don't pass under braking on corners and try not to pass on corners because you don't know what the other guy will do. That, as you can see, that was my first lap and I hadn't yet figured out that the throttle actually wasn't really responding the way it should do when I wanted it to and I was about to stomp on it on that particular corner and get on the gas pretty hard and go out a lot wider and take up most of the track. He's lucky I saw where he was coming and didn't stomp on it. And we're also lucky that the car wouldn't have taken the throttle anyway, it wouldn't have absorbed it. But um, previous videos you'll see that I probably would have given him a very good run for his money as far as acceleration goes, which would have caused a massive problem because I would have gone out wider and he would have been there bang crash owl two broken race cars which is why he got sent home you don't drive like that on um on fun days like race day different he might be a really gun driver really good knows his stuff but he doesn't know what i was gonna do what i was up to so yeah you don't do that but anyway he, he learned he got sent home so that's fine um that's about it you can see the car i think in one point in time he, despite the throttle actually sort of turned itself limiting or whatever because it wasn't getting enough voltage the the yeah it's a weird situation the electric motor has to work against the springs and the throttle butterfly to open it up so if it doesn't get enough power it won't open up so for some reason the link system didn't recognize that that pin wasn't getting enough power i guess they've never designed it to take that into account they never figured it that would be a situation where they have enough power or, or none at all. Um, and in this case, somehow someone managed to stick a PWM into it, which is a just weird. You wouldn't expect that, right? So it didn't go into a fault mode. It should have gone into fault mode and just shut off. And then I would have known straight away, okay, we've got a problem with our driver wire. I would have just cycled the power and driven back into pits. Um, so you can see that accelerating on the straight, trying to diligently play with the throttle to not make it trip out like it was or, or cut back or whatever we still got up to something like 240 something k's an hour on on that short little straight even without full power so it, it'll go quick if we get everything right everyone cross your fingers and toes it'll be a difficult day walking around with the cross fingers and toes but we'll see how it goes thanks for watching thanks for all the support everyone and um hopefully we've got some good news 
If we've got good news, I'll, I'll post a video Saturday night as well. Right, cheers, bye.